Okay, first person shooter game time. Very first first person shooter I ever played. If you don't count those ones with the cinematics and you're just clicking on stuff. Probably Wolfenstein 3D. The original Wolfenstein, not the enemy territory or any of that bullshit. I used to play it on my IBM 386. I used to take it to school and install it at the school. And uh, you get to fight Hitler in the game. You get a chain gun. Now this is one of those games that you don't jump. There's no stairs, I don't think. I don't think there are stairs. But it's just you move around in an XY environment, which is left, right, and, you know, horizontal and vertical. Length and width is all you have to work with. Just a, a straight plane. Let me just show you a picture that will demonstrate the X, Y, and Z axes that I've got. This came with the WoW 3D model. That shows, like, the X and Y, you know, and the Z goes up and down, which is the vertical. So, okay. Wolfenstein, you didn't even have to really aim right. Like, you could shoot off to the left, and if you're pointing in the general direction, you would hit them, I think. The original Doom 1 was like that, too. I played Doom, also installed it at school. Then a game came out called uh, Heretic. It's like a medieval fantasy first person shooter which you like you shoot your wand out you shoot spells out with your hands uh, you get a staff if you're a warrior you get like gloves and you can punch stuff with really spiky gloves or some kind of sword probably this is one of the precursors to Hellgate London I guess because it's a first person shooter but it's a medieval fantasy type thing it's like Warcraft but it's a first person shooter I'm sure they didn't really base their stuff on Heretic and Hexen which was the second game. Yeah, Hexen was a little better because you had these mage gauntlet type things or just using your hands, you could cast lightning bolts and stuff and you would do this, like spawn from image. And then you would, uh, had all these cool monsters and bosses and stuff and you had stuff flying up in the air, like gargoyles that you could shoot at. Even though you, you just aim straight down, you would hit stuff way up there just as long as you're lined up with it, right? So that game kind of involved the Z-axis, only it's just the monsters and not the player. Uh, and then Quake 1 came out and you had stairs in that I think and it wasn't that great but Quake 1 is memorable to me because that's the game I think I made a video about this earlier where I had my 9 inch nails CD in my computer and I didn't know about it I forgot I left it in there downward spiral started playing Quake and all the boxes on the ground had 9 inch nail symbols on them because you had a nail gun in the game that's one of the weapons and it had this auto play feature that if you had a music CD in your computer it would automatically start playing your CD so I thought the game had this soundtrack for 9 inch nails I thought well this is awesome it's like a video game with 9 inch nails kind of like the Aerosmith game that came out like you'd shoot CDs at stuff like the arcade yeah like bombs and you played not as Aerosmith but you saw Aerosmith in the game and you would shoot Aerosmith CDs out of this gun and there's been a bunch of games based on rock bands but that was one of them and that made me think Quake was one of these crazy games with an awesome soundtrack so Hexen Quake Doom 1 then they started adding jump pads which lets you jump really high and you can semi control it you can kinda of move as you're jumping which is not not quite there yet it's getting a little better but there's a game came out called rise of the triad R-O-T-T -T. some people call it rot or whatever I think I might have played this after Quake 2 came out or some of these better games but I went back and I saw it and I was like wow that's kinda of neat um, not, a lot of people don't even know about it because it's kind of not that popular uh, the walls are huge and has these crazy floating stair steps. It's not very realistic. And the guns are kind of realistic, but the gameplay's not, so it's kind of trippy. Anyway, it's a pretty cool game. You might want to actually try it out and play it now. Just for a little nostalgia. Um, then, I think after that is when Duke Nukem came out. Duke Nukem, first game to have strippers and porn sort of stuff on the walls. And you could use the bathroom in the game, and you could curse, and he would say... Uh, eat shit and die and stuff like that and then you get this rocket launcher also had bombs flying around these pigs and spaceships on the z-axis and you could jump and there's actually a clip I found which is funny where I don't know if this is a mod but you can kick your foot instead of punching your fist and you can kick both of your feet at the same time while you're running which doesn't even make sense but Duke Nukem it's a pretty fun game you're fighting these aliens it's a little bit different spin than what you normally would play and then after that, that's when the sequels started coming out. Doom 2 came out. Quake 2 came out. And that's really when it just started going crazy. FPS games started getting big. Quake 2, I have to say, was one of the best games for as old as it is, like at the time it came out. It was the first game, I think, to introduce the grappling hook. Well, I don't know if it came out in the normal game for it's a mod somebody made, but 
there was actually teamwork being done. Capture the flag. People were working together and using their grappling hook in all these crazy ways. You would hang from the ceiling, shoot your chain gun down at people while you're hanging there. I love to do that. Uh, I played this mod that I don't think many people played because everybody was playing lithium or something. There's this mod called Laser Mine CTF, which is capture the flag, but they turned all the lights out in the whole place. And you can make these little trip wires out of lasers, and if you run across them, it blows you up. So you got to be, really be careful going around corners, make sure you're crawling underneath lasers or crouching underneath them or jumping over them. And uh, you also had the grappling hook in that too. So Plus it was um, more 3D. I don't think it had the jump pads, but you could jump, plus you had the grappling hook. So the grappling hook kind of made up for the um, jump pads. So it's kind of one of the first games where you could really control the Z-axis. But you couldn't really control it, you just had a grappling hook and it, you went where it went. So like you could go in any direction, but you couldn't control the distance or the speed. Okay, then you also had Unreal came out, but I didn't really play Unreal that much. Uh, so I don't want to really talk about it without knowing, but I did play it a little bit. And Unreal, after Unreal 2 came out, it started... Everything started using the Unreal Engine, and it all started looking the same. FPS games sort of devolved and became worse. Like, Quake 3 came out, and they had jump pads, but I don't think they had the grappling hook until maybe somebody modded it later on. But still, you don't see a lot of people playing Quake 3 with grappling hooks. And if there's anything I know from Quake 2 is that grappling hooks equals success. Fun and grappling hooks are basically one and the same. So you had Quake 3... Doom 2 or 3, Unreal 2, Tournament, all these FPS games, they still just had the X and the Y on stairs and jump pads, and that's really all you had with the Z. Not a lot of control. So up until then, I don't think any games had vehicles you could drive around in until Battlefield 1942, with the exception of Tribes 2, which came out before that, I believe. I think Tribes 2 came out right around the time of Doom 2, or 1995 or 6 or somewhere around in there. I'm not exactly sure. I'm probably way wrong. But I think it was the only game that had vehicles you could drive around other than Battlefield 1942. And then that kind of made it popular and other games started doing it. Then you had Halo, which was like the really big game on the console, first-person shooters. But before that, even the Nintendo 64 kind of made first-person shooters popular on consoles with GoldenEye, 007, and James Bond game and um, Perfect Dark. And you could also say Turok Dinosaur Hunter, which there's a new game coming out for Turok that's not even for the Nintendo Wii, it's for like PlayStation 3 and Xbox, which is kind of weird. Also, the maps are really small. Like, you're indoors a lot of the time, you can't see very far except like the end of the hallway or something. And it's basically built for death matches and it's not really that good for Capture the Flag. There's no open areas. I mean, some of them, like, there's a map from Quake 3 that everybody knows. It's pretty popular. It's, like, outdoor, and you fall from space if you fall off the edge. But uh, you can see to the end of the map. That's as far as you can see. So when Tribes 2 came out, it was a whole new ball game. The only problem was that the marketing for Tribes 2 was so abysmally bad, nobody knew it existed. Actually, it was Tribes 1, which came out earlier. The people that played Tribes 1 became like fans, like a cult classic. They just loved it. Tribes 2 came out, and they wouldn't go to Tribes 2 because they were still playing Tribes 1. They're like these RuneScape guys. They were that obsessed with it that they, still today, they probably play Tribes 1. The only marketing they did on Tribes 2 was there was a little thing at the beginning of some movie called The Cell, which if you're thinking of some other movie with the word cell in it, that's not the one you're thinking of. This was a really, really bad movie that didn't get any publicity. So nobody really knew about the game. Yeah.